so the Edge Store MVP is finally out and available as a pre-alpha release. And now I'm trying to get some users to actually try it out and give me some feedback. And there's a lot of things that I want to share with you today, like my new Notion productivity setup and how I'm using Mid Journey to help with the startup and also how a hacker has been trying to attack Edge Store. So yeah, there's a lot of interesting things that I want to talk about, so let's get straight into it. So let me start by showing you my Notion setup, and that's not directly related to the product itself, but it's as important. I finally learned how to work with relationships between databases in Notion, and some other cool features as well, just enough to come up with this. You can see here that I have two projects. The perfect base project is related to the creator stuff, mainly YouTube videos. And this is the startup project. You can see that inside here I have the features that I want to build and you can also see the progress of each feature. If I go inside a feature, you can see that I have a lot of tasks and I can drag and drop these tasks into the calendar view for when I want to complete it. Some people like to work with Kanban boards where you have like a to-do, a in-progress and a done column. But personally, I don't like this for solo side projects. Personally, I think it's a lot better to break the tasks into very small tasks that can be done in one run. And when I'm done with it, I just check the box and it's over. This makes it a lot easier to do consistent progress over the long run. For example, here in my YouTube video tasks, you can see that I break down the scripting tasks into four parts, sometimes even five depending on the video, because scripting takes a lot of time for me. But breaking them up like this makes it a lot easier for me to complete them, which also ends up making it a lot easier to start them as well. And if you want another video of me explaining how I made this Notion setup, and maybe even share the template, please let me know in the comments down below. Okay, enough with the task management stuff. Now let me show you what I actually did in the project itself. And the first thing that I did was that I deployed the Docusaurus documentation. Right now it's just a very simple one-page documentation, but don't worry, it's gonna get a lot better because I know how a good documentation makes a huge difference when choosing between packages. And another thing is that I also moved the landing page to the Docusaurus project. And you can see here that I also made a few changes to the UI itself. Here's how it was before, and here's how it is now. One more time, before, now. Basically, I added some gradient color to the main title, and I also added the navigation bar. And a cool thing about the navigation bar is that when you scroll down, you can see here that the style of the navigation bar changes and it becomes kind of a glassy, blurry, translucent navigation bar. Yeah, I think it looks a lot better than it was before, but you'll be the judge of that. Tell me in the comments what you think. Oh, and just in case you want to know how I did these things, for the gradient color, all I did was to add a gradient background color to the parent element, then turn the text to transparent and add a clipping behavior to the text. I'm using Tailwind, but you can see here the actual CSS styles that are being used. Yeah, and for the navbar, I actually created a custom React hook to get the scroll position and just use this information to switch the style in the CSS. Yeah, and this is based on a tutorial article that I read. I'm gonna leave the link in the description in case you wanna check it out. Now let me show you the things we did in the actual service. Now we have the service web app where you can log in and start using it. If you have requested early access, an email should have arrived to you, giving you access, and you should be able to use the same email to create your account and start using. If you do so, you will be redirected to your projects page. Right now it's a very simple page, it doesn't have any fancy features, it's just a fixed auto-generated project where you can grab the secrets and put it into your app. You just click these buttons to copy the information and paste it into your environment variables. The setup is basically the same it was in the last video. You have your next route API setup, the Edge Store provider wrapping your whole app, and the hook being used to upload the image. But now it's not a simulation anymore, it's actually working. Let me just grab here a large 20 megabyte file and upload it. This progress you're seeing is the real progress to the upload being done. And it is uploading to the Edge Store service. And if I just grab the link that I logged here, you can see that I can access it from the browser. And I actually made two upload functions. One is the upload image, which uploads a public image to the storage, and anyone can access it if they have the URL. But there is also a upload protected image, which can only be accessed if you have a temporary token that is generated by the Edge Store service. And in the future, you will be able to customize who has access to that token. Maybe you just want logged in users to have the token, or maybe you have some different user roles with access to different folders. Yeah, there's a lot we can do here. 
And now this check is done inside the Lambda Edge, which is close to the user so that the response time to get the image doesn't get too much affected. Yeah, and if you wanna try Edge Store out, just apply for early access in the landing page and also consider joining my Discord server where you can talk more freely about it. Yeah, and another thing I wanna talk about is how the service is already being targeted by a hacker trying to find some vulnerabilities on it. I can clearly see on the Lambda Edge logs requests being made to try to find environment variables and AWS credentials and a lot of other suspicious stuff. And I searched the IP the requests were coming from and it seems to be an IP that it's known for doing attacks. Yeah, for more legacy apps where you have like an Apache or an NGX server, these types of vulnerabilities are quite common, where you have like some credentials or some secret information in a folder that shouldn't be accessed but are accessible from the internet. And if they can find some of this information, they can do a lot of bad things with the app. But for the architecture we have here, I'm not too worried. The worst they can do is make a bunch of requests and make me have to pay a little bit more for it. But as of right now, the infrastructure cost is still at $0 per month. Actually, 50 cents per month because of the Route 52 hosted zone that is needed for the edgestore.com domain. But yeah, at some point, I'll probably add WAP to the CloudFront distribution so that these kinds of malicious requests can be blocked automatically by AWS. And yeah, you might be thinking, but why my app is being targeted? How did they even find the URL to target it? And that's easy to answer because I have the Edge Store URLs inside my public repository. And there's not much I can do about it because it is an open API and the URL is supposed to be public. But there are hackers automatically crawling all public GitHub repos to find some secrets or some URLs that they can try to attack. So if you by accident push some secret into your public repo, even for a few minutes and even deep inside the history, you should consider that a hacker already has your secret and it's already trying to attack your service. All right, let's talk about something else. Recently, I've been fascinated with the Mid Journey service. It's so cool the images you can generate with it. And I've been trying to build a logo for Edge Store with it. Yeah, I know I should not be worrying about this at the stage I'm in right now, but what can I do? It's fun. And yeah, I've generated a lot of logos, but I'm mostly trying four types. One is a cloud, because the Edge Store is a cloud storage. Another one is a box, because it is a storage. And also a planet, because it is a CDN service that uses CloudFront to distribute the cache all over the world. And also an abstract logo, because why not? And I want it to be simple enough to look good as a favicon on the browser. And I would love to hear what you think about them. And if you have some suggestions, please leave it in the comments. Personally, my favorite results came from the cloud prompt, but I'm still very undecided here. And I also have been trying to find some mascot that we can use, but I'll probably leave that for after we decide the logo. Okay, finally, let me tell you what I'm gonna do next. I'm thinking on focusing more on the open source side of the project for a bit. I want to build an AWS provider so that people can use the Edge Store package with their own S3 and CloudFront distribution. I think that by doing so, it will be a lot easier to attract people to the Edge Store community and having a bigger community will eventually help on the service side as well. So that's what I'm gonna try to do for the next video. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to get notified when I release my next video. See you in the next one. Ja